In this video, we will learn how to build a DNP3 communication between one ID to Ellipse E3 or from Ellipse E3 to other Ellipse E3 by using two drivers, one for master and one for slave. So in this demo, I will use two PC. So this one, this first PC will be my master and here, in this remote desktop connection, I will build my slave driver. So the first time, we just build this from two different domains in two different PC, and the domain is just a new domain with nothing inside. The first step is to insert in a driver here, in my project, I will insert one library file, dnp slave32, I select and open and I need to configure the setting. So the purpose of this demo is to help you to make a working communication first. Then you can review point by point in the documentation and also from your requirement all the settings you may have to check or uncheck. So for this purpose you need to read this document, which is the DNP slave DLL user manual. So you will have all the settings explained corresponding to this driver setting windows. So to make a very simple communication, which is the purpose of our demo, we will use basically the D4 function so I don't have to modify too much information in the screen just to check one by one but actually it looks okay we want to use the very basic configuration so this is default configuration and it looks okay the DMP address is one so this is important information we have to keep and for the rest, we will use no more value. Then in a setup, I will choose the Ethernet because it's PC to PC and they're connected with a LAN. And in Ethernet, I will just connect to the IP. So here, this driver here is the slave side so I will listen for connection on port 20,000 which is the default port for the DNP the master will have to point to this device in order to establish the communication so this driver is ready then now in our kit in order to check the physical layer status I will just add this this is nothing to do with DNP but it can just tell you if the communication is working okay and if the cable is is plugged and uh, the physical layer is working so the value will be 2 if the driver is really working so now I want to implement some tag so I will implement two tag so here in our kit, you don't have any information about the tag or whatsoever. So I will have to add the tag manually. So the first one, the first tag will be the digital input. And the second tag will be the analog input. For the digital input here, we have to check N1, N2, N3, N4. So in this case, we have to refer to document for slave. And we have to check carefully the information for N1, N2, N3, N4. Which is here, chapter 2.3, N1, N2, N3, N4. N1 is SOI, SOE type, sequence of event type, multiple by 10, plus class. In our case, class will be by default 1. SOE type will be 
two, we want to make demo for communication with tag with timestamp. So we will use the sequence of event type equal to two with timestamp. So two multiply per 10 plus one is equal to 21. So I'm going to input here for these two tag the value of 21. Then for N2 here, we check again the documentation and is a function code to perform. So see table one. So for this, I will use by default, the value is just read one. Then I continue to check the document. For N3, object code and variation. So I need to check the table two. And for this demo, I will choose a variation for digital input. So actually, I will use the variation. So this table, we have all the different variations possible. So if you wanted to check the code, you need to check. Here, you can check the formula here. N3 must be informed as one parameter according to the following formula. Object code multiply per 100 plus the variation. So the variation here and object. So this one will be multiply per 100. So as you can see here, 1, 2 is binary input with status. So 1 multiply per 100 plus 2 is equal to 102. So here I will just input 102 for entry. No, 102, sorry. Then here, this is just uh, the index. So I will just put 0 for this TI and 1 for this AI. For the analog input, I go back to my document. And in document, I will check what I can use for my demo. So let's check if we can use any floating point, interesting floating points. So for example, this one, 35, 32 bit analog input floating point. So here is also a function called this one. So this is where we will check. So here, 30 multiplied by 100 plus five. Then here, I just put the value 3005. So now that the value is OK, I can save and I can activate the driver. So if I input the value like this, 0 and floating point, then my slave is running and ready. Then now I go back to my master site and in my master site I will also so from the beginning I will insert also one driver and I will choose the DMP master and in these windows I need to configure also the very basic setting to make a very easy demo that you can complete by yourself later according to requirements. So I will check the Perform Class 0 integrity on Startup. I will check Enable Unsolicited on Startup. And this one also, Initialize Upon Receiving Device Restart and Perform Class 0 integrity every, and then the value is millisecond. So I will just check the value by default. Then here I will use the div value by default here. And here I just need to check the value by default, it seems correct for my demo. Then in other here, I will use use callback, immediate tag read. So I can just check the value when the slave will change them and in setup, I choose internet and I will point to the IP 
of my slave PC, which is this IP. The port here is the same, it's a TMP by default, it's 20,000. Then I press OK. Here in our kit, I also can check the physical layer address. Just drag and drop. And I have here in the master, I can directly import one DI, one AI, or I also can insert them manually. And this DI and AI, it must have the very similar setting with the one on a slave, except as for N1. So here I can have the document, DNP master here. And in the NP master, we have a very similar information, but N1 will change. N1 is slave address of zero to use the default slave address, so this is our case. N2 is function code, N3 is the object code evaluation, and N4 is the index or address. So this is no change for N2, N3, N4, only one N1 change, which is the slave address. So in our case here, I will choose one, which is for the default, and here I will change the code for this one. I will choose the 32 bits floating point, and I will change here the value on index. And it's just a read value, and then I can slave and I can run. And automatically I can read the value directly from slave. So if I go back to slave, and I will just see here, if I change the value on my slave for the DI, it change here on master, and here I can just also and put a new floating point, and the value is shown also here on the master. So this is how you can build a very easily a communication between two PC by DNP3. So you can use this demo to start to establish the communication and to refer to documentation to continue and to complete your project. Thank you.